Tens of millions of us are traveling home today. No maps needed. Our GPS knows the way, we hope. We rely on it so much, we hardly ever question just what's behind it all. But our David Pogue did. Head southeast on West 57th Street toward 10th Avenue. GPS, man. Your car, your phone, even your watch knows exactly where you are on the planet by listening to satellites 12,000 miles over your head. GPS is always on. You don't have to pay anything for it. You don't need to know anything about how it works. But don't you kind of wonder? We're very proud of it. We enjoy providing that utility to the planet uh, on behalf of the United States Air Force uh, for free. <laughs> That's true. Mm -hmm. That's right. The Air Force runs the American GPS system. Overseeing it all is Brigadier General Deanna Burt, the Director of Operations at Air Force Space Command. A lot of people think, oh, it's that navigation thing on my phone. Is that about it? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> so think about your ATMs at the gas pump, the uh, New York Stock Exchange, the internet, your power grid. Wait, are you telling me that the internet and the electrical grid need GPS? They need a timing standard to link it up around the world. We have a constellation of 31 GPS satellites, each beaming a one-way radio signal towards Earth. Those signals are being broadcast continuously, and when you are in view of that satellite, your receiver will pick the four best satellites in view. So you want one directly overhead and three on the horizon. That gives you the best position. Of course, those critical satellites don't fly themselves. What's the full name of this room? This is the GPS Master Control Station. And it seems to be a, a very secure room as well. Very much so. Just getting in this building is, is difficult. Active now, 58 out of Ascension. At Schriever Air Force Base in Colorado Springs, a team of young technicians works in this room 24 hours a day, watching over the satellites. The commands they send can adjust the satellite's positions or check their health. You got a good step nine for 58. Is there ever trouble? I was uh, on duty as a crew commander a couple of years ago when we had a satellite, and it turned out that the satellite's antenna was just heartbroken. Captain Josh Harnish is the operations flight commander. Do you have a spare? So we actually have about four on-orbit spares um, because you can't just send a fix-it man up to space, right? And how old is the oldest one still up there? The oldest one that is active to you as a user is about 26 years old. That's. I dare say, older than some of the people controlling it. Absolutely. So the, the operators, they're generally fresh out of high school. That's safe or something as important as the GPS is? <laughs> so they go through a very rigorous training program. And then anytime we talk to the satellites, two people have to actually look and approve what's going to that satellite. So one person couldn't go rogue. That's correct. Oh. There is no self-destruct command. Let's just put that to rest. <laughs> <laughs> well. It's nice to know that such an incredibly important system is in good hands and absolutely, positively safe, right? Is there any way an enemy of our country could take out the whole system? Oh, absolutely. And they wouldn't necessarily have to attack the satellites. It's much easier to attack the signals. Dana Goward is the president of the Resilient Navigation Timing Foundation, a group dedicated to protecting GPS. GPS is so integrated into all of our systems that any significant disruption would be catastrophic, almost an existential uh, threat. At the U.S. Naval Observatory, where a master clock synchronizes the satellite's clocks, he gave me a little history. With this system, a ship could determine its position on any ocean in the world within 30 feet. Originally, the GPS network was developed for one primary customer, the U.S. military. A tank unit could accurately determine local time for a coordinated attack. Additional applications include precise weapons delivery during inclement weather. The mandate was to put five bombs in the same hole. About 10 years after GPS was deployed, some people in the military were astonished to find out that it was being used by civilians at all. The GPS system as we now know it became operational in 1995. Today, only a tiny fraction of uh, people that use GPS have anything to do with the military. Mostly it's the underpinnings of our networked technological world. All right, but what about this business of vulnerability? So if you and I were writing a screenplay about 
North Korean bad guys. Right. Would it be plausible to think of a scenario where they could bring down the whole system? Yes, it, it could happen. A suitcase size, a GPS jammer, for instance, could have a massive impact on a major metropolitan area, especially if it was located on an aerial platform. Jamming means drowning out the GPS signal here on Earth. If you're an evildoer, you don't have to build some expensive rocket to blow up our satellites. You can just broadcast so much radio gibberish that nearby receivers can't hear the satellites. General Burt says she's well aware of the threat. What sorts of things could a bad actor do? For GPS, the, the two that I'm most worried about as an operations officer is jamming. Uh, the second piece would be I'm most concerned also about cyber intrusion. So how do we fight back against the jamming? So GPS-3 will be three times more accurate and have eight times more jam resistance. As it turns out, GPS-3 is a new generation of satellites being built by Lockheed Martin. So we have to put on these lovely hair smocks first. <laughs> this is the first time Lockheed has ever allowed a network camera crew into its factory. The air is very... Clean. clean, yes, it's actually a clean room facility. Tanya Ladwig is in charge of the GPS-3 program at Lockheed. It's actually a clean room environment where the air gets changed out at least 10 times per hour. Even a speck of dust could damage the satellite once it's in space. Think about a fleck of foil that might be tagging onto your clothing and it gets into the spacecraft. We could actually short some of our electronics. Two of the new satellites are already in space. The next six are right here in this room in various stages of construction. And this is not a model, this is not a mock-up. This is the real thing. So this time next year, my phone will be talking to this. Yes, your phone will be talking to this satellite. That is really freaky. Each one is built by hand and takes 18 months to complete. By 2034, our entire constellation of GPS satellites will be GPS-3 models, which are better protected against jamming and cyber attacks. Even so, GPS watchdog Dana Goward would like to see a backup system on the ground, too. Users will essentially be bulletproof to any kinds of disruption if they're using both systems. So a, a backup system that would be on the ground? A complementary and backup system, shall we say. All set, let's go. In the meantime, Brigadier General Deanna Burt says she intends to keep right on worrying about protecting our GPS. My job is to make sure you don't have to worry, but I do think we need to be aware uh, as a nation that there are threats and there are people wanting to threaten our way of life and we have to be prepared uh, when they come.